but I really like, uh, I, I guess, obsessed is a little bit of craziness, you know, um, op op very obsessive people, in fact, um, always attract me for some reason. And um, when I was making Mesopotamian dramaturgies, for instance, I, and also Paradise, but particularly the um, dome and the column, you know, when I was invited to go to Rome to do this residency and with Christiana Perella, and she invited me there, and you know, the idea was actually to also to respond Rome to Rome and, and coming from Istanbul, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to connect the eastern capital and the western capital of, of the empire. empire. Rome. Rome. Because, uh, you know, so much so that Italy sees itself as continuation of Rome. We here also think that we are, we are the real Rome uh, and we are the real capital. So there's this, there has always this, this tension, you know. Earlier on, um, I came across this uh, Spanish architect whose name I forget. I think he lived a few hundred years ago and he went completely mad. And he, I think he, um, he died in an insane asylum or something, or some sort of prison. And uh, he believed that uh, God asked him uh, to um, redesign heaven. So he spent all his life making very detailed architectural plans of heaven. And in a very curious way, they look like today's New York. You know, it's like he came up with his idea of skyscrapers and it's like incredible imagination. But imagine it in, in the, like, uh, I think 16th century even, you know, as early as 16th or 17th century. I don't quite remember uh, because I came across this uh, idea and uh, it was so fascinating for me that I didn't want to actually to go further in. Uh, because I just wanted to use my own imagination to, so I may be completely making up this story, I don't even know. But I have this notion of this mad architect who is designing the paradise and you know and, and if I remember the drawings uh, correctly they look like skyscrapers and you know like this imagined modernity 300 years before you know. And um, another mad person that I really like, because, you know, we were talking about this idea of should we call the show in Italy Dictionary or mm. Encyclopedia, remember? Um, uh, <clears throat> there is this uh, a mad, again, Turkish writer who started making an encyclopedia called the Encyclopedia of Istanbul. Only three copies of the encyclopedia are, are, are left and he only um, made, uh, started uh, I think letter A and that was it and he didn't even finish letter A and he died. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it was printed nevertheless because it was very special because he made a, a, a very um, personal encyclopedia. It has nothing to do with an encyclopedia, only the method, the format is there. But it, the entries to the encyclopedia were like, um, you know, Butcher Mehmet Effendi. Mm -hmm. You know, Butcher Mehmet Effendi is someone who lives in my neighborhood and, you know, <laughs> every morning, blah, blah, blah. And he has an affair with so and so's wives. And, 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 like this gossipy kind of encyclopedia of the of Istanbul, uh, which is a very contemporary gesture, if you like, you know. Yeah. And it's all, it's impossible. It's mad, but at the same time, it offers uh, a lot of room for uh, discussion uh, about well, how an encyclopedia should be and what does it mean to have an encyclopedia and mm. is it really a useful tool? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so <clears throat> when I make my pieces, I kind of, in Istanbul especially, 
or in Erzincan. You know, I'm always thinking either I am a little bit like a, a Reshad Ekrem Kochu, you know, who, who did this encyclopedia, or this other mad Spanish architect whose name I cannot remember. Uh, because either the, I'm dwelling into people's personal stories, but at the same time with these stories, uh, it's not so much those the stories that I'm interested in, but it, the format and the form of, of how these stories are constructed by the subjects and also by myself. Mm -hmm. So it is like they become architectural pieces. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so my two kind of guides are these two mad people uh, who I also find are uh, in a way it's so mad the premise that uh, it's genius and inspiring to me um, so that is if it, if there's any uh, <coughs> any um, thing that connects all my works together Absolutely, all of them together, even even my little animation pieces or my death sound, I make these kisses and all that. Um, and the bigger installations, you know, that is, th th those are the two things that really connect them all together, you know. And... Um, but I'm not mad. 